Hi, um, it's been a while. Uh, been a long while actually since I've just sat down. I've been playing a lot of online uh, games and uh, you'll see me on uh, Raldenash's channel uh, doing uh, previously Conan. We're just about to start on a uh, Dragon Bane uh, adventure with uh, Ice Wind Dale. And so this is going to be really exciting. That's on uh, Raldon Nash's channel, and I encourage you to go over and, and look at that. Um, but it has been a while, and, and it's because I, I, I don't want to waste your time. Uh, nobody wants to sit around and, and just kind of crap out on, on watching. 10 minute intros and uh, and just garbage. And I want to talk to you about Sweden rolls and Nordic Skalds and uh, and what Andreas Lundstrom has uh, has created and something that I think a lot of people take for granted uh, that there are some excellent podcasts out there that are truly amazing and really worth your time. And I, I think that's where I want um, this to go, is how best to use your time. Now, over the years, I've been spending a lot of time watching YouTube videos, um, honing the craft, as it were, as a dungeon master, as a player, watching how people play online. I, I think that that's really important if you're going to be online. Uh, whether on Twitch or YouTube or whatever streaming service, or as a podcaster, you want to kind of watch and listen. Um, it's a very different experience if you're online, uh, as I've discovered, than just sitting around the table and playing. You want to create that atmosphere, but you also want to ensure that it's compelling. Uh, the reason I think why Critical Role is, is so successful is because uh, in the beginning they always created this mystique of uh, being players around the table and everything was great and they were eating pizza as I've talked about in some of my previous videos and it was just absolutely fantastic to see them in the studio but really they acted more as if they were just around a table having fun and playing. And so I've been watching all these videos, watching a lot of different people over the years, and I really didn't pay much attention to podcasts. Uh, I had forgot that I bought Dragon Bane. I was out of the fantasy uh, fever that I had been in for so many years, and I wanted to learn about Dragon Bane, and I came across Sweden Rolls. And I don't exactly remember when this occurred, probably around January, I think. Uh, and I've been listening to them pretty much ever since. Uh, I caught up with Dragon Bane. I started to listen to Forbidden Lands, which reminded me how much I love Forbidden Lands. Uh, and I have listened to everything that they've produced for Forbidden Lands. And I've got to tell you that Andreas Lundstrom is amazing as a GM and compelling, funny. Um, a podcast gives you a much more intimate, sen uh, intimate sensibility of your relationship. It's not like this where you're watching me and you're looking at my my facial expressions or my zits or, or my clothes and my mannerisms. No, on a podcast you're listening truly to the voice and it's so easy to fall in love with the voice. It's uh, it, 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 it's it's that mystique of of radio. You're not envisioning them on little screens around the places or with backdrops that are green screened or what do they have in their bookshelf. Uh, and at the moment it's all theology. I've got it on my theology angle. Um, and 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 that's that that's the point. Is that with Sweden rules you 
you get a strong sense that these are just friends. Yes, they're voice actors, but they're friends who have come together around the table. And a lot of their stuff has been produced during uh, COVID. And yet, even though it's mentioned, you don't get that sense. Um, you truly get a sense of joy. I love how um, Andreas has, uh, uh, there's a pattern. And the pattern is predictable, but it is compelling. Uh, you start off with a, a, a character recapping uh, their own story, very much like, uh, like uh, oh, it's um, so Walking Dead. It's just like Walking Dead, where you have an individual talk about their the character and what happened to them last time. This is part of the pattern that Sweden Rolls employs. And so there's one of the characters recapping the story in their own experience. Then they move on to laughter. And so you get this laughter every time. Whether they've been drinking, whether they're just telling a joke, or it never seems forced. It seems like you're joining in to a joyful event. And that is brilliant for a podcast. It's not a hard open. It's joyful. They talk about uh, what's been going on. They talk about their characters. Uh, they are free to swear. And it is thoroughly enjoyable. Sweden Rolls is, to me, an excellent, excellent listen. I don't travel a lot. Um, I don't drive like I used to when I was in a big city. And I'm not flying. I, I'm, you know, the farthest I go is about a half an hour, and that's if I'm lucky. Um, and so listening to podcasts hasn't been something that's part of my travel, but it may be something that will kill an hour, but also help you to become a better player, a better GM, and to understand the rules of uh, absolutely free league games. But they go into others as well. They've played Baldur's Gate. They've played... Um, uh, cult, absolutely fantastic. Two uh, kind of one shots. They go on, but that, but uh, like three or four episodes. But cult, uh, they've done some amazing things. Really, really good stuff. So I, I encourage you to listen to that. They are awesome, and uh, I can't get enough of their podcast. Um, I, I've always been kind of weirded out by the actor. Um, enterprise of the um, uh, of the hobby, but I've kind of reconciled myself to the fact that this is a worthwhile endeavor, and, it, and it's a honed skill. Um, I, I've got to remember that um, the hobby is growing into something different. Um, its entertainment value is. Um, is incredible and of the same value as a video game and of uh, and of a movie or, or maybe a, a, a series. We shouldn't dismiss the value of the entertainment that we're being provided with. Um, it's the same type of uh, argument that some may say over real art um, human crafted art and I know very well that there's an argument to be had about the crafting of the prompts uh, the prosaic or the uh, or the poetic prompts that create the art but the art all comes from collage uh, but when you're talking about media art um, it truly is a value and uh, whether it's uh, art that comes from, uh, uh, from oil or acrylic or uh, watercolor or 
uh, as I said, collage of uh, electronic media um, and of music, which Andreas is, has a wonderful theme. These are all things that should draw us in and help us to realize there's a great value. Um, you don't go to an artist and say, well, I'll buy that for a hundred bucks. Um, uh, their time, their effort, the longevity of it is certainly worth the thousands of dollars that are spent on beautiful pieces of art. Uh, and that translates into books as well. So when you think about the art that's created for, um, you know, for games, uh, that money needs to be spent appropriately by the creator so that the artist is paid appropriately. I'm off on a tangent, but this is all to say that the podcaster deserves uh, to receive compensation for the entertainment that's being given and proportionally to those who are watching and those who are engaged. And I would say that um, absolutely you should be engaged with uh, Sweden Rolls. It is incredible. Um, so I've spoken about Andreas Lundström, an amazing GM who comes up with uh, incredible incredible characters, uh, wonderful voices, but it is not overdone. It is very accessible, and if you're an old-time gamer, like myself, um, you're going to be just as drawn in as if you're, say, uh, a new gamer uh, who is used to the voices and uh, the drama, but also the humor and the um, improvisation uh, with the yes and, yes and and yes but, or no and and no buts. Uh, these are tools of the trade for the actor uh, in terms of uh, riffing off of one another, and I think that Sweden Rules does this wonderfully. Um, and I apologize for my pronunciation, but uh, Jacob uh, Hol uh, Holtkrantz Hansen uh, is absolutely amazing. Very soft-spoken. Uh, he's in um, uh, a Netflix series. He's a, a, a wonderful actor, and uh, but but his characters. Um, are just so amazing in the show uh, that I think you'll really enjoy him. Um, uh, Anneli Heed is a voice actor and uh, apparently quite a famous one. I'm not sure if she's still the only uh, registered voice actor in Sweden. Um, I don't know what registration of voice acting means, but uh, she certainly does an amazing job in, in uh, uh, in Forbidden Lands, and her character is uh, uh, annoying, uh, lovely, uh, shows a lot of growth. Uh, it's amazing. It's a delight to listen to her voice and to hear this um, this very different character from what she plays in, say, Cult. Uh, or other things. Dominic Kelly, a British actor um, who has a very distinctive voice. I remember uh, listening for the first time, not seeing what he looked like, thinking of him as a much older gentleman, uh, probably 60s, maybe even older, uh, which is hilarious because I'm approaching 60 very, very soon within the next year. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he seemed much older than he was when I saw his image. And his character's are just great. Um, uh, very thoughtful, very reflectful, and very British in a lot of ways. Uh, Matthias Redbo, um, again, just such great characters. He plays a wolfkin in uh, Forbidden Lands, and uh, hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. The way that the later episodes of Forbidden Lands unravels um, 
and, and there's a particular uh, a couple of episodes uh, that you, you'll be just laughing out loud wherever you are listening to these. Um, uh, Ingela Lund, uh, she is so funny uh, and deadpan funny. Uh, she's in Dragon Bane and uh, loves to do <laughs> uh, Celtic accents. <laughs> Uh, whether they're Irish or Scottish, and she pulls them off extremely well. And um, I, I, again, you just, it, I have the same appreciation for Sweden Rules that I did for Critical Role when it first came out. And there's also someone who's not pictured in their uh, kind of advertisements, and that's, uh, I think, I'm, I'm not sure if they call her a special guest star or... Uh, or a special guest, or I, I forget exactly now how they refer to her, but Amanda Stenbach, uh, who is in the Dragon Bane um, series. And th there's, y you've got to be patient with the Dragon Bane series, um, because there's a lot of conflict, I think is the best way of saying it. Um, the, the conflict can be uh, a bit intense. Uh, I believe that it's uh, Matthias and uh, Ingela and, uh, and Amanda who uh, have this um, very real um, character interaction with their own goals and their own uh, <laughs> their own uh, directions that they're 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 trying to go in, and uh, and I, I think that it's uh, I think that it's Matthias who who keeps on uh, kind of rail <laughs> railroading them in a lot of ways, um, and he grows as well. I think that that's a really important. Uh, not only literary, but of course, podcasty way of uh, showing character growth, character development. And again, it's part of the craft. If you enjoy that side of role playing and you enjoy listening to uh, podcasts in particular, this will be something that just transports you into the world um, and run with it. It is absolutely worth it. So, um, I just want to give you kind of an idea about uh, Sweden Rules and their um, and their Patreon. Um, I, I Patreon for a month. I'm gonna re Patreon again. They have uh, four tiers. Uh, Halfling Archer is a dollar fifty, uh, and you get their releases uh, before, and uh, and then Rust Brothers, which. Uh, nobody wants to be a Rust brother, uh, and that's from Forbidden Lands. If you don't already know, you get Q and A and music and bloopers and all sorts of stuff like that, and and uh, and that's great. Uh, it's six uh, six dollars American a month, and that's fantastic. Uh, I chose the Orc Chieftain, uh, and uh, you get behind the scenes and stuff like that. I think I I subscribed in a in a slow month, uh, and uh, and there wasn't a lot that I kind of discovered, um, uh, but I had a busy month work wise, and so I didn't really uh, engage a lot. But I'll tell you that. Um, uh, even if you're not utilizing the Patreon uh, for all of those, the bling that they offer, um, the 1450 is worth it just from the fact that you're going to get that by listening to their back catalog and by the anticipation of their podcast. Uh, I think that it's, it's money well spent and something that you should do as support. And uh, because I'm not supporting them, this month, uh, I decided that the way that I would uh, offer them my my love and appreciation for the joy that I've received at listening to them is by giving them a plug um, with the teeny tiny bunch of viewers that I have. Um, and then there's Demon Lord, and Demon Lord I think is the best tier. Uh, and at first it seems daunting in terms of the cost, but if you think that you're getting Andreas Lundstrom 
as a GM. And I'm not, I'm not trying to, to, to throw this out um, mildly. Uh, I'm not disregarding Matt Mercer and his following, but Andreas is just as good as Matt Mercer. Um, it would be like comparing bands that you love from the past. Uh, they all have a place and they all have their own specialties and their own different tones and strengths and weaknesses. And I think that uh, for $28 a month for you to be able to play uh, a, a, a game with Andreas, it's absolutely worth it. And so uh, those are the four tiers on the Patreon for Sweden Rules. Now I talked about uh, Nordic Skulls. But what I do, as many of you know who watch my channel, is I do a kid's, uh, well, they're teenagers, so um, 13, 14 year olds, some 12, uh, but generally 13, 14 year olds, I go over to the school that is basically just behind me, uh, and uh, I, uh, I do an after school program with the middle school kids. And uh, we've been playing role playing games since before COVID. Uh, I started with D&D. &D. As you know, I've uh, kind of dropped that and have turned to uh, Free League and independent publishers. Uh, some Chaosium stuff, uh, which I'm really enjoying as well. Uh, Pendragon, uh, I might bring over to the kids, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, certainly, uh, Dragonbane is their favorite. We just had the end, uh, they're all graduating and going to high school next year. So, uh, um, we, we have a summer program. Well, they got into Dragonbane, and I've been running them through Windham. And Windham is what Nordic Skulls has produced. It's uh, Andreas uh, Lundström's uh, personal world that he's been developing for the past 20 years. Um, he has collaborated, play-tested, and honed this in. And uh, I want you to know that um, it's still on backer kit. Uh, it's called Windheim. If you're a North American, you probably will pronunciate it as Windheim. Um, uh, and the Horn of the Dawn, which is the adventure, uh, it is, it's amazing. It's uh, an island continent. Uh, it is, as far as I recall, the size of Europe, roughly, um, and it is extremely uh, playable with the Dragon Bane setting. And of course, it's made for Dragon Bane, but this is a wonderful um, product. Uh, I'm just trying to get so it, it's made. Uh, Fifty-six thousand or fifty-seven thousand dollars U.S., um, which is uh, uh, five hundred and sixty-four thousand kroner, and has uh, over nine hundred backers. So that's pretty amazing, and I really think that it deserves more people. I wasn't aware of it until well after the Kickstarter campaign ended, and I couldn't wait till they opened up the backer kit. Well. It's on now, and uh, um, I, I absolutely love it. I've only got it in uh, in this form because it hasn't been sent out, but I've paid for it. I've backed it, um, and uh, I want to see if I can go to the Kickstarter page, which I can, and here we go. Uh, 34 updates. I'll tell you that the art is amazing. Um, you. It, it, it really is. It's, it's an absolutely wonderful uh, world that he has created. And I, I think that um, you, would, you would enjoy it and it's worth your money. Um, I want to just uh, go to this if I can find it. And maybe it's just not on here because I, you, I went through backer kit. Anyway, um, it's awesome. I'm really happy. Um, if I go to my backer kit of my pre-order, um, and uh, I, 
I don't even, oh, here we go. Um, I spent 890 uh, uh, Swedish kroner. So uh, that's about $90 American. Um, I forget how much it was Canadian. Uh, shipping, of course, is disastrous, but that's just life at the moment. I want to give you some examples of, uh, of why I find um, Windham so compelling. Um, first of all, he's got a cosmology of Ashfera and uh, and this uh, uh, th this is kind of the world, and he goes into showing uh, the home of the gods and the twins of Sarai, and 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 these different kind of, of the void realms of the demons and dragons. These dragons and demons have been breaking through what is essentially a protective bubble uh, around. Uh, and, and a, a sphere which is uh, protecting. And uh, the history of creation is well developed, uh, speaks about the dwarves, uh, the Elfheim, uh, the Mir, who are the, um, who are the native uh, or indigenous people who have been forced pretty much into taxation slavery in a lot of ways um, and uh, have got to produce these pelts which everybody wants and so they spend all of their time running around getting these pelts. Um, there's a northern and southern range with a, a wonderful pass. And if you listen to the Dragon Bane podcast uh, from Sweden Rolls, you'll get a journey through this very pass. And uh, you'll eventually end up in one of these dwarven places. And I don't want to kind of spoil it for you. Um, uh, the Empire of Bastion is, is not a kingdom, it's an empire. There's a lot of different uh, realms within Bastion. It is developed enough so that you know that your characters generally are going to come from Bastion and they will have been imported into Winheim. Um, there's a history and you get Foam's Veil and a wonderful map of Foam's Veil where you essentially arrive uh, when you come to this uh, island continent. Uh, the establishment is, uh, is at the harbor. There's an inner town, a new town, there's a temple, and there's the slopes. Uh, and again, beautiful artwork. I hope to put this up as I'm speaking. Um, they have temples, as I said, the Golden Temple, and a lot of other things. I don't want to get into the book too, too much, but I want to get to the stuff that you might be saying, okay, why should I buy this? Why should I get this so quickly? Um, moving to uh, kind of the add-ons that you might find um, what you would want to buy this for. So say, improving your characters, different characters, different skills, different um, kin. So um, the kins are the Thurmzer uh, or Zor uh, dwarf. Um, they're proud, stubborn people. They do not forget and, and, are, and, they are seld and they seldom forgive. Well, that's kind of a dwarf. I think it's the ability which we really have to focus on. Dwarves don't have exactly the best ability, I think, in the Dragon Bane setting, uh, natural uh, 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 ability. And so the ability that's here is a true ally. Whenever you help someone you truly consider your ally, that person gets two extra dice to roll instead of the usual one. Uh, great. It shows that... Um, if, if a dwarf is your friend, they're your friend and they mean it and it matters and i think that this is a brilliant way of, of utilizing the uh uh the the, the three um uh, willpower points that you're spending on this uh that extra dice can can make or break a uh a, a, a skill roll uh the merle 
are the human culture that uh, have lived on uh, Windhame for thousands of years, um, and uh, and they're the ones who have incurred the heavy taxation from the Bastionites. Um, they live in the eastern part of uh, Windham. The pirate mallards, they're in the western southern uh, end, uh, as it were. I hope that that's not a spoiler, but they are pirates and they are uh, distinctive, very distinctive. And the only mallards who are native to the uh, the, the, to this area are these extremely uh, green feathered red mohawked uh, mallards and uh, uh, you don't want to mess with them. The sea elves are amazing. Uh, they live uh, between five and seven thousand years and uh, they they're uh, their ability is water healing. Again, it's uh, three willpower points as a standard. Uh, when submerged in water for one hour, you heal 3d6 hit points and willpower and remove all conditions. So uh, again, a very uh, compelling um, kin to play. You have the Bastionite, which you can play, as opposed to the basic, and the power of them uh, is the, uh, when in melee combat, you can activate this ability to draw holy strength from uh, Thracon. And Thracon is the god of the Bastionites, and there's a bit of a, um, a discovery uh, that, uh, that occurs, and uh, again, no spoilers, but um, there's a lot to the religion element in this game, not from a um, overtly spiritualized or uh, religious way uh, that's uh, trying to be preachy, but from a from a purely a fantasy world way. You have the wood elf, you have a deep elf, and of course you have the wolfkin who are in uh, uh, Eshfera and. Uh, um, and they live on the mainland uh, in Wolf Tang, and they come across. And so um, they're not a specific kin, but there's a description of who they are in this world. The professions are cleric of uh, Thracon, um, and everything is there. You've got the skills that they should have, the heroic ability, which is described later on, and uh, the nicknames, the gear, and all that stuff. So they also have a berserker, a spy, a sun seeker of Barakon, which is uh, uh, the what I would imagine as being the... Um, more uh, indigenous religion of the uh, of Ashvera. Um, uh, there's a shaman or a shah person, uh, oak hammer, uh, who is a holy hammer, and uh, uh, the hammer of Kels, uh, Kel Keldazin, uh, the hammer of Keldazin. And so uh, uh, that is a special weapon with, uh, it's a one-handed weapon with a strength uh, needed of 13, 2d6, uh, 2d8 damage, and, uh, and, uh, and so it goes on. Um, and of course, it's a bludgeoning weapon. And then you have new uh, heroic abilities, like, as I mentioned before, Divine Blessing and Spirit Walker. So uh, there, uh, and it also has creating non-player bastionite, non bastionites. It has a list of monsters which are uh, really cool for um, the setting itself. Remember, these are... Um, these demons and dragons have come through the veil, the sphere, and so this is a momentous change in the uh, in the world. And so you have wind dragons and light dragons. Uh, uh, very, uh, you have a blight demon and uh, power demon, uh, and you have uh, stone ogres. Uh, etc etc and so i think that what i'm trying to say to you is listen to sweden rolls because it's worth your while
support Sweden rules because I think that you will find after listening to them for probably maybe four or five episodes that you're going to be hooked um, and you'll want to support that art uh, that they're creating for you for your entertainment so that you become not only for the entertainment of listening to another world but remember every time you listen to a podcast that is an actual play or watch an actual play you're learning from the mistakes of the people who are on the other side you're watching to hone your craft to hone your own table whether it's at home or wherever and uh and you're 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 learning but you're being entertained at the, at the same time and and it, it's it's just worth your while uh worth supporting and so i'm gonna encourage you to do so um you have uh nordic skulls which is uh andreas's uh company i guess publishing uh or uh production kind of name for this and uh, and so Windhame uh, is a fantastic product it comes with an adventure that is sold separately they're both really good books and uh, one of the things that I should tell you um, is how large they are so you've got 131 page pages in the uh, Windhame book and for the Traces of Darkness, which is the first part of the Horn of the Dawn, um, that's 94 pages, and it is uh, it, it is very well developed, and it's all over the place. You you cannot just say that it's one specific type of um, one specific type of direction uh you've got a whole bunch of things there it's going to give you a story it's going to give you um a path as it were but you're not simply just uh killing everybody and 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 you're not just solving puzzles you're not just character role playing you're doing a bit of everything and so it's a very balanced um uh, adventure and i'm running that i'm going to be starting that uh in a few days with uh, the kids over the summer because they're going to be joining me in my hall and and uh, we're going to be playing uh, this over the course of the summer and so I'm really looking forward to it uh, uh, to start them right from the beginning and uh, I'll keep you up to date on uh, what's going on with them and, and how they've been doing uh, with this setting and with Dragon Bane because I want to keep you up to date on how I'm feeling about Dragon Bane um, and so I'm playing with the youth. Uh, I'm also playing with uh, Dido, uh, Mohammed, uh, some of you may know, uh, and that's on my channel, uh, Dragon Bane, uh, and uh, he's the GM, and my dog is asking me to go out, and so obviously my dog is telling me, one of my dogs is telling me, it's time to go, Dad. Uh, and then I'm also playing on Rob Nash's channel, and I'm so looking forward to playing in the snow, partly because it was 35 degrees this past week, and uh, uh, Celsius, 35 Celsius, which is a gazillion degrees Fahrenheit, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, and so it, it it, it's just uh, amazing. Dragon Bane is a great game. I don't know why it sat on my shelf for so long. Uh, I'm back. I'm back to wanting to play uh, to play fantasy again, and that was something that. Uh, and I don't consider playing the One Ring, which I do uh, online but offline. If you know what I mean, I just play with friends, and uh, I. It's not the same fantasy. It's not the same. It, 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 uh, for some reason, Tolkien is a is a different type of fantasy. It's not high fantasy or low fantasy. It's a it's a it's a completely separate type of mentality in my mind. You may disagree, but that's that's the way my mind works. So um, that's my that's my spiel for uh, Sweden rolls for the people who the actors who have been. Um, uh, employed to um, to entertain and uh, and also for this wonderful.
product of Windhame. Uh, it's still on backer, kick, ba uh, backer kit. Back that. And uh, I'll see you next time with probably a discussion of Tales of the Old West. Um, and I know that I've got a uh, Dido um, fourth episode of the um, of the Secrets of the Dragon Emperor uh, that I'm just getting ready to upload. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm going to be doing as I think. But I'm not going to just do things every week or every other day or whatever. I do it when I think that it's worth your while to listen for this amount of time. Anyway, if you've watched this far, thank you so much. Take care. Have a wonderful day. If you're really, really hot, stay cool. Hydrate. Bye. <laughs>